Hello, everybody. It's me. Um, I was asked to do something for a friend of mine, and I'm going to do that. Uh, actually, it's something I kind of wanted to do anyways, and I thought I'd already done, but I didn't. So now I'm going to rectify that. Uh, I was watching uh, Stacy at Pink Poodle Crafts Creative Playground. And she had done this a couple of years ago, and I've done several since as Christmas gifts and things like that. <clears throat> but this is um, something I got from her. This is not my idea. And I figured I would uh, join you and show you what I do. Uh, I did sell one of these at the auction on my channel last year. And I believe it was August of last year, but, uh, my camera's not that great. It's good for the most part, but it's not, um, you know, professional quality or I'm going to run, you know, uh, run for any Nielsen awards or ratings, not awards, <clears throat> but it, it suits me for my purpose. So what I'm going to do is show you how I get to where I'm going. Now, first thing, you can make these as big as you want, as small as you want. It doesn't matter. And I have a feeling this is almost going to be a little bit too big. Uh, what this is, is it's cart a uh, poster board. I got like two for a buck at the Dollar Tree. No big deal. And uh, I really, really suck at trying to make cones out of paper or anything else. So it took me a minute and then to try and level it out so it sits straight up and down and not at an angle, you know, like this as opposed to this. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit too tall. So I am going to trim this down. But, and you can use any color you want. It doesn't matter. If you have uh, a neon green one from a yard sale or you know, whatever. You can use anything you want, any color you want, because this will all be covered, all right? Um, so you don't have to go to the store and specifically buy white. I just, I was out, and I didn't have any uh, poster board or cardstock or anything big enough for what I needed. Obviously, I think this is going to be a little bit bigger than I want, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I really suck at measurements <laughs> and um, eyeballing things. So I, what I tried to do, and um, it, uh, I'm getting my ruler. It didn't work out very well because I still had to do some trimming. Was at the highest point because you're going to have this when you cut this you see that's going to be at an angle or when you roll it it's going to be at an angle and you don't want that so what i did was i took the highest part and that's where i put my my ruler let me get there and that's what i went down for my measurements and i'm not saying this is an exact science it probably is but i do not know it so i'm going to this is about 18 inches tall, and I don't really want one that tall. One, I think uh, the last one I did was about 14 inches, and it took me about 450 coffee filters to cover the tree. And that took quite a few hours to do, but it's a really nice handmade, and you can decorate it yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down to about 14 inches, which, let me grab my pencil. And honestly, this is not, not an exact science. And it's not perfect. But what I'm going to do is three and three quarters up from the bottom. So let me make sure I did that right. 
yeah, from the line. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to measure this. And again, like I said, if there is a better way, I am more than willing to say, yeah, my way is screwed up. Let me know. And I will definitely change my wicked ways. All right. <clears throat> Now, I don't want those, I want the other ones, even though these are not that great. They're Fiskars, but this pair that I got from Walmart is just not, hasn't been that good. So I'm going to cut up almost to the lines. straight from the bottom because if you try to cut around a, a cone like this, oh boy, you're really going to find yourself having a lot of problems. And I'm not going all the way up to the line because um, after you get it cut, you know, there's some wiggle room as far as whether it's going to sit straight up. Now, I will tell you, when you get it cut and you stand it up, and it may look like it's straight up and down, but if you twist it, you'll see it'll start to either lean one way or it'll lean the other, and that'll help you determine whether or not you've got it on a straight, you know, on a straight basis. So I'm going to cut this up again in the middle so it's easier to and once you get that first cut it's not as hard to just go around and like I said I'm cutting just below the marks I'm not cutting directly up to the marks because there might have to do some shaving. You might have to, you know, trim it down on one side or another. And I believe there's a way to do this where it automatically just comes out straight. But honestly, I don't know that way. For the most part, it looks good. Yeah, I really didn't want one that big. That one probably would have taken about 550 to 600 uh, coffee filters. Now, that's a little bit more manageable. Now, even if you've got little jagged edges at the bottom, don't worry about it. All right, so what I'm going to do now is see looking at it it looks straight up and down but if I turn it it still looks straight up and down now that way leans just a little bit which means, well, it means nothing <laughs> so I'm just gonna trim it a little bit on this side That's wobbly. But like I said, once you get it done, you'll put it on a base. So it's not going to be, you know, and even if it's just a um, poster board and you don't think it's going to be strong enough to handle being stored or whatever else, you can always, um, what I do is when I make things out of paper or whatever, Um, I'll stuff the inside with like plastic garbage bags, you know, like the handheld ones you get from Walmart or the grocery store or something like that. And that helps hold this um, more sturdy. So, now this will take a bunch of coffee filters and a bunch of glue sticks. This is what I learned from Stacy, and I probably should have rewatched her video to refresh myself. 
but I haven't done that yet. <laughs> and yes, I had to get my coffee. And let's see. So we're going to pull, pull out some coffee filters. Now these are kind of industrial sized. Um, how thick or how small determines on, you know, what size you get. I'll probably have to do a lot of trimming on these, but these were given to me, so I don't have, I didn't have to go out and buy them. So you take one coffee filter, I just push it down in the middle, and then pull it out like that. So you've kind of got like a, it's not really fanned out, but you know, and then at the bottom, I twist, some don't, I don't twist a whole lot, but enough to leave this little bitty flat mark. That's almost too big of a flat mark, so I'm going to trim that. And then I'm going to take it, um, now some people can fold it down, I don't, I fold mine up so I can see it. That's just, that works for me. All right, and then I take my glue gun, a little bit, and I put it at the bottom. And I hold it there for just a second. Now, even though it looks like it's hanging down when it sits, it'll be, you know, flat. And once you get a roll, or once you get going on a roll, it um, it actually goes pretty fast. I think uh, doing just the uh, cute or the coffee filters alone on the last tree I made took me probably maybe two hours, three hours. I don't remember. It's been it's been almost almost two years, but it doesn't take very long. Now, I'm doing a couple so I can show you. I'm not doing them, you know, right on top of each other. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that little bitty gap? Okay. You don't want too big of a gap, but you want that little bit of gap because you want to be able to have, you know, the fullness of the tree. And you can start to see the base coming together. I know there's a lot of white there, but I was sitting out on my back uh, deck. And it's enclosed uh, with screen. And, uh oh, that one didn't want to stay. I have to put it back on. Um, but one of the doors, because we've got one leading from the house, and then you walk through the deck, and uh, one leading out into the backyard. Well, the one leading out into the backyard, how come that doesn't want to stay? I put the glue in the wrong spot. Anyway, um, is just like one of those, uh, magnetized, uh, sheets of screen that you put up along your door frame as with magnets and that has a magnetic enclosure down the center, but it's not a door. It's just like a screen. And, um, Let me add a look. No, it worked. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, but my son and his wife were visiting for 4th of July and they've got, uh, 
I think he's, ooh, you've seen him on one of my other videos um, when I was working on my glue book. Uh, his name is Timber, and he's part wolf, part shepherd, and he's huge. He looks like a damn horse, okay? And uh, he come bounding, bounding in, and they got in late. They were traveling from out of state. They got in late and let him out in the backyard. Well, he was running around the backyard, not, and it was dark, not seeing that, uh, you know, there was a screen there. And when we called him, we were standing inside the deck area that I call it a gazebo, but it's not really a gazebo. It's a gazinda because everything goes into it. Um, Um, he didn't see the screen in the dark, so he came barreling through it and uh, ripped a hole in the bottom, which, you know, is no big deal because, you know, dogs are dogs and he's, like I said, he's a horse. But, uh, so there's a little bitty hole in the bottom and I go out there to, to smoke. Yes, I still smoke. I stopped for a year, but then I gained like 30 pounds and said, screw it. And started smoking again, but I still haven't lost any. Like I was, I've been smoking for about a year again, and I haven't lost any. But so my 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 reasoning did not make sense to start smoking again. But we'll see. Now I'm actually probably gonna have to get up off my fat ass and exercise, but that's okay. Um. Yeah, see, you don't want to fold it in too much because then you'll shorten, you'll shorten your base. But like I was saying, I go out and I smoke sometimes. And I was sitting out there in my rocking chair and I was smoking, reading my Kindle and uh, a squirrel, a just a plain old gray squirrel come hopping up the fence and in through the hole at the bottom of that screen and sat there, looked around and started to crawl or walk, whatever you call it, all the way over, almost halfway between the door and where I was. And he was probably maybe four feet away from me. And he just sat there and looked and I got a, I got my, I turned my camera on on my phone because I use my Kindle app on my iPhone um, to get a picture. But uh, I wasn't fast enough and he started to turn around and leave again. But he wasn't in any rush like I scared him or spooked him or anything. He just figured, ah, I checked it out. There's nothing here. I'm going to go on again. But I did get him trying to leave leave the uh, the deck area he was almost to the the screen and uh, I did get a picture of his tail and his butt but then um, I got another picture of him uh, it was either the next day or the day after that where he came back in didn't come in as far as he did but uh, still came in through the screen and up actually into the the enclosure and I did get a picture of him that way. So it was, it was pretty interesting. And I had a rabbit do that last, or in the spring. I had a rabbit hop in. And uh, didn't come my way. came towards the opposite corner of where I was sitting. But it still hopped in. <clears throat> so that was kind of cool. So we have about... Five rabbits that we normally see in the backyard and from what I understand because we only just got the house in last year the beginning of last year and uh, what I understand is they have their burrows or dens whatever you call a, a rabbit home underneath my gazebo or slash deck area my gazinda and uh, And so there's like three different sp spots at the base of where the gazinda touches the ground where they've got little like doorways. <laughs> so I went to the local feed store 
and picked up a 50 pound bag of rabbit food. And then I picked up some alfalfa. And uh, every so often I'll go out there and I'll, I'll throw a couple cups of the rabbit food down near their doorway. And doing it that way, like I said, I think I got the rabbit food, see it's November, so about 10 months ago. It was February. <sighs> I guess that's 10 months. And uh, I still have probably 15, 20 pounds left. But we have five of them at least that we see regularly. And my granddaughter and I um, named them. And they had some babies last year, the beginning of this year, rather. And uh, and then, of course, once they grow, you can't really tell them apart. But we had fun trying to uh, trying to name them. And I think we had Thumper. That's what that was. What she called it. And then there was Baby Mine, Little Bit, Little One. Um. That's four. I can't remember what the fifth one was, but, uh, but we had fun and we watched them play in the backyard and I'm not in the country. I'm in a city, actually, not a very big city. I think the population is about 23,000, 24,000. I mean, it's not Detroit where there was, I think at one point, well, before I left, there was one and a half million people in Detroit. I don't remember the, the names, but I just know that the population in Detroit with everything that's gone down is half of what it used to be. And they've got it at about 700,000. But yeah, that's where I grew up. So, you know, I mean, I'm not totally unfamiliar with farms and animals and things like that. Okay, so I've got, I've got it this far. And you can see how, you know, how fluffy that is. And if you can kind of see ahead as it goes up, I'll be trimming the ends before I glue them on. Like I did that first one. To make them a little bit shorter and a little bit shorter and then a little bit shorter. Now, when I made the cone, I did leave a hole there. Because I, what I want to do is, last time I didn't. And um, I just closed it all up and then had no support to put on a tree topper. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet because this is the first time I've done that. Last time I just had to wing it. <laughs> And pretty much that's what crafting is, is just winging it with items that you have in the, in the house or in your craft room or wherever you decide to do your. Okay, so let me get this first row finished. Uh-oh, I need another glue stick. I put a little bit of glue at the bottom of mine. There we go. And then... I stick it through and it attaches to the other one right in here and it helps keep it in there sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, still keeping up with you know that little bitty gap in between but you really want to try and keep like right through here the same length let me see if I can get that a little bit closer nope well glue it at about the same height all the way around uh, let me see can you see that better now <clears throat> it gives you a more uniform tree 
and you see, yes, it's going to be lopsided and it's going to be a little bit difficult until you get that last one in where it'll balance out. Push that off to the side a little bit. If your fingers are sensitive, um, I just bought uh, a cup. They had a two pack at like the Dollar Tree on a book ring at uh, the Dollar Store. Dollar Tree, yeah, duh. I just said that. And they're perfect because they're the silicone, and they're perfect for helping with uh, hot glue. Um, some people, they have, call them Santa's helpers. You can buy them. Um, I bought one of those things. For, I guess it's the company's from Plaid and they're glue gun, you know, accessories. Well, they give those little finger cots, which look like little, you know, hoods that you put over your finger made of silicone. Well, one, I have fingernails, so they never make them long enough. Two, I have fat thumbs. There's no way... And I've tried them and they could like cut off the circulation to my hand. So, I mean, I have some, but uh, I don't use them because they don't fit. They don't make them for people with big fingers or fingernails, which, you know, I can understand because, you know, that would just be a market that would be a nightmare, <clears throat> I would think, trying to worry about sizing and everything. But they could have a small, medium and large, you know, for children's hands or adult hands. And maybe they do, and I didn't look long enough, but. I said, this has only taken me about, well, with the talking and, and everything. See, it didn't even work. I still had to hit it with my chin. Uh, it's going to take, it took me about 30 minutes total to do the bottom row. And that'll change depending on how big your uh, cone is, how uh, wide the circumference is, your diameter, whichever form of math you choose to use. Now, can you see, let me turn that, can you see through here how there's little gaps all the way around? There is a method to the madness. I'm almost done with this row. I will start on the second row. To show you why the gaps, because obviously we're going to stagger them. Now, the reason I'm not super worried about, you know, complete straight up and down, you know, level surfaces is because when you get it all done, if it leans just a little bit, all you have to do is trim the uh, copy filters. Thank you. 
My brain does not want to work today. Well, that's usually most videos, isn't it? Uh, there's my baby. Hey, Kitty Curry. Meow, meow. Kitty. There's my baby. Uh, she was my son's, and he gave her to me. And, uh, so she already came pre-named, but I still think it's a pretty cool name. And, uh... Uh, he named her Kitty Purry. Well, I didn't know, and this might still be wrong, but uh, I believe somebody told me one time that Katy Perry named her cat Kitty Purry. But I still thought it was um, a really awesome play on names. Kiki, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she is a cuddle hog. And I say cuddle hog because most people like it when they cuddle, when cats cuddle, because usually they're pretty standoffish. But no, when she cuddles, she is all up in your space. No lie. I mean, I have to physically pick her up and put her down to get her off of me sometimes. Because she's like, I'm comfortable and I don't care if you are or not. And I'm going to sit here for as long as I want. And she doesn't just want to sit in your lap. She wants to climb up your chest, sit across your neck, be in your face. Like if I'm reading, she always wants to climb over and lay right, right down on my phone or on my nook or on my Kindle. I mean, and she is obstinately stubborn to the point where it's like, Oh, gosh, I almost need a forklift to get her out. And she's not a small cat. I mean, shes I think she weighs, last time she was like 12 or 14 pounds. Now, you don't think that's big, but for a cat? And honestly, it's her breed. She's a calico. And a lot of calicos don't get that big. But for some reason, she is, she is muscular. And she is huge. Okay, so now, there we go. Okay, now you see how that could possibly, let me hold this up, be an awesome great bottom for a Christmas tree. All right, so. And all those little gaps all the way around. This is what we do next. Now you can do, depending on how big it is, you can do another layer the same size. Me, I'm not going to. Okay. So I'm going to twist it up just a little bit more than what I did before. Okay. Not just that first twist, but I'm going to do a second twist make it a little bit shorter this way and yeah and after I do that let me get my scissors I'm going to trim then again I'm going to fold this up and then I'm going to stick it down here between the two that are already there. Oh, I think I trimmed that a little bit too much. But that's okay. because Now trust me, when you get done with putting all these coffee filters on, you're going to have a trim fest with your scissors to get it the perfect shape you want. That type of thing. And like I said, these were industrial size coffee filters, so they're a little bit bigger than I would normally use because I would normally use just a regular size. I believe they're number fours for the regular size coffee pot, number twos for a smaller size coffee pot. And for the basket coffee pot. You know, 
And I did cut that, I believe, a little bit too short. But that's okay. And I go through and just stagger them. So right here, I probably should have used a colored one for um, visual purposes so that way you can see. Now when you're done and you get all of these put on all the way up to the top, the last couple rows, instead of gluing them with the fold face up, then you turn them around and glue it fold face down. So you don't see this at the top. You see what I mean? You, uh, it'll just be, you know, it'll be more like that where you don't see the extra. All right, and so that's, yeah, that one was way too short. So let me pull this off. I don't want it to be, you know, obviously, but I'm not going to throw that out. I'm just going to set it aside. That's also what's really cool about doing something like this is, you know, like these, you can get a whole bag of like 400 or 500 at Walmart for like a buck 47. I'm sure you could find a hundred of them. And the cheaper the ones, the better. <clears throat> so, I mean, you don't have to go out and get any. And you may even have some of your own, you know, that'll work. Yeah, that's better. See, there's not that big gap right there. Now, when you're done, okay, you'll want to go through, you know, go through and kind of fluff it. This is before you cut it, and you might find a gap, okay? Then you'll go ahead and, and just fill in those gaps where they are. Um, I may not even need as many coffee filters because these are so big. Uh, it's taking up a lot of space. But the thing about it, though, is you want a lot. You want that density, all right? Because if you don't have that density, you won't have the strength to hold any ornaments or any embellishments you put on it. Ah. Oh, come on. Okay, that one just doesn't want to separate, so it's just going to sit there for a minute. And industrial-sized coffee filters are a little bit stronger. Like I said, I don't, uh, I didn't buy these. They were given to me. So we work with what we have, right? So I'm going to go through, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do this whole thing. I'm going to go through and uh, do, you know, filters. I'm going to fill it all the way up and then I will come back and show you what it looks like before I do anything else, before I trim, before I do any fill-ins, um, that type of thing. So um, I will see you in just a second. Well, it'll be a couple hours for me, obviously, but, you know. Um, yep, so I'll be back. Okay, I've gotten uh, three or four rows done. So I just kind of wanted to show you what it's going to look like. Now, it's not sitting flat because obviously I'm holding it up in the air. But I wanted to show you how full that can be. And how sometimes, where is it? might be right in here where you might find 
a gap, but don't worry about that until after you get everything done because look, see how these are almost straight up and down? Um, as I'm putting layers on, it presses these down some, so they become more and more condensed. But right now, because of the twist in the fold up, it's going to roll, you know, it's going to roll upwards. And you can also see how it's, it's, um, it's uneven all the way around. This is going to look like it's rounded, but that's because they're just falling straight down. They're not laying flat. So if I was to lay this, you know, flat, then you'd be seeing a different, you know, a different look. But see how underneath, how they're all just coming straight down away from the hole? When it's lit, when it's set down, let's see if I can get it to set down all the way. Ow, that's hot. Okay, once it's set down, <clears throat> let me turn this down just a little bit. Okay, now you can start to see how, you know, how full this is. But I just kind of wanted to show you a quick, you know, peek into uh, what may look like a difficulty when it's not. Like, for instance, you know, these coming straight up and down. But as I lay more layers, this will lay out, okay? But I wanted to show you how full this is. Okay, so I'm going to get back to putting those on, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, what I wanted to show you was um, I've gotten quite a bit done. Um, I know the light's a bit bright. But once you get up to, you know, about two-thirds of the way, then you're going to want to have to cut a little bit more off of your uh, coffee filter than you did before. <clears throat> And instead of, you know, just cutting, you know, maybe the tip, I'm going to go down and I'm going to cut a bigger piece. And then I'm going to start layering it. And that way you get the automatic, um, you know, whatever you call it, the shrinking incline uh, that gives you the shape of the tree. You'll still have to trim it when you're all done after you fill in any gaps you might find. But um, when you start getting up, most of these were the same. See, the first two layers I didn't trim. The next three layers or four layers, um, I trimmed that little bit. And then this one, of course, I'm going to trim a lot more. And then I'll probably do two, maybe three layers of this. And then when I get to the top, you know, about this far up, I'll trim a whole bunch, but then I'll be flipping them upside down and gluing them in. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up to you while I'm at that next level. So again, I'll be right back. Okay, I've got most of it done. I've got the last couple rows at the top that I wanted to show you uh, about flipping. You know, instead of doing them with the, the flip up and gluing it in, now we're going to do it with the flip down or down. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So now I've pretty much gotten it to the point. Let me set this over for just a little bit and move that up so I don't burn myself where I'm almost halfway up, not quite, but almost, when I start to turn and twist it. So there's only just maybe three inches. I don't know. I'm, I suck at measurement. Anyway, um, about three inches. And instead of when I glue it, I'm still going to cut it. See, I'm cutting most of that off now. Instead of just a little bitty, went from, you know, little pieces to medium pieces, 
do bigger pieces, <laughs> do even bigger. So, you know, that's the gradation that, that went up. And it's not all the exact same. Trust me, it, it isn't. I mean, obviously you can sell. I trimmed some of it a little just so I could kind of keep my eye on what I was doing. You can see how, you know, it's all uneven and jagged. I said, I only just did a little bit, not a whole lot. So now I'm going to glue this. And instead of putting it in like that, you know, like that, where this part goes up, I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to put it in this way. And I'm still staggering. Okay. But this way, let me turn that. You see how that's more clear and a cleaner line as opposed to like over here where you can see the gaps. And that's what we want to do finishing up. I think I've got maybe three, possibly four more rows. And it's a good thing because this is the last of my little uh, packages of these industrial size copy filters. Because if I had to go to Walmart and buy some more, I don't think I'd find them there. Well, I didn't buy these. These were given to me by um, one who wanted me to make this tree for them. Oops, now see, you got to remember, I almost put it right side up. But there. See how much different that is? And it fills in a lot of those holes. And it also, when you get to the top... It doesn't look so um, sloppy. And I've been looking and I really don't have any gaps. I'm not seeing any. And I don't know if that's just from the style because this is the first time I've used this type of coffee filter. Usually it's just a regular, you know, dollar store brand. But um, you can see how wait there we go how jagged it is and everything I didn't trim all of it I just a little bit to kind of give me and you see up there is going to be needing needing a trim so but that's what I'm doing now I'm just going around and instead of having you know 30 or 40 around the bottom and gradually going up I think I'm around maybe eight or ten now so that kind of helps. I just have to remember now that I'm not doing it one way, I got to do it the other. Let me see if it's a little bit. That's no, not, not so bright. Give me a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to keep something with color in so my camera doesn't like freak out and go wonky because of the, you know, oh my gosh, all the white. So I couldn't get them apart, so I just kind of crumble them up a little, and look, they separate on their own. Now, even though I've paused you, I did have to stop and make dinner and everything, but I believe that most of this has taken me probably a total of three hours maybe not quite but almost pardon me excuse me um almost three hours worth <clears throat> and that doesn't include the time I took off to go make dinner and eat so 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 far I've got about roughly three hours invested in this so far
See, I'm not even there yet. So let me finish this up and uh, when I get to the very, very top, then I'll come back and we'll take the next step. Okay, so I'll be right back. Um, I got it all the way done, all the way up to the top. I'm going to turn it on its side so you can get an idea of how big it is. I mean, it's it's a pretty substantial, you know, tree. Uh, now, you could leave it like this. Um, there's some of the top because you can't really cut it too small, you know, so that'll have to be trimmed. Um, and I think I want to make it just a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to, and it's really easy. I'm going to just take my scissors and just trim it, you know, just like that. And what I would suggest is while you're doing it, don't just go up one side, okay? Turn it so you can kind of keep your shape, you know, not perfect because obviously, you know, you want it to look a little bit organic a little I mean, you don't want it to be just you know but another thing is me I don't if you do a lot of gift wrapping and you know mailing stuff for the holidays a lot of the stuff that you cut off is perfect for like that that gift crinkle stuff that you find in gift bags and in, in gift baskets and things like that. Um, me, I honestly, I just throw it out. I recycle and use, you know, so little. A lot of times that uh, a little bit of shredded coffee filter is not that big of a deal that's going to make me, you know, lose any sleep at night. So, but yeah, so that's all I'm doing. I'm just trimming it and shaping it to the desired shape I want. And yes, this part does make a mess. So, you know, be in an area where, I don't know if you'd want to clean all this up with a vacuum, but, uh, See, that's not as big of an angle as I'd like, so I'm going to cut it a little bit more. And this does take some time. Um, I mean, it's turning. But yeah. And you'll set it down and then look at it, you know. I mean, I wouldn't start decorating right away, to be honest. But that's just the, my process. Um, you'll set it down and I walk away from it for a little while. And then, you know, I'll walk by it or something. And then something will stick out at me and go, ooh, that doesn't look right. So. I'll get out the scissors and I'll trim it a little bit more. And this doesn't necessarily have to be for Christmas either. You know, I mean, you can make an Easter tree or you can, you know, um, decorate it for a, a baby shower or, you know, something along those lines with little baby, you know, um, pacifiers and bottles and things like that. I just think that would be really cool. You know, when I do baby showers and I make diaper cakes, uh, that's, that's a little, well, depending on how elaborate you get, you know, you don't have to be super, super elaborate, but me, I like, I like, my thing is I like elegant but simple, or simple but elegant, you know? That's my, uh, that's my thing. There we 
go. And all I'm doing is every so often, I'm just turning, I'm just turning it. And also, when you're doing this, okay, make sure to kind of fluff it. Because then you'll end up getting something after, even though I just trimmed that. Let's see, you see that right there? After fluffing it, that popped out. So I'll want to trim that a little bit. And I'll turn it and turn it. Keep turning it and I'm pretty sure I've got almost got it the way I want it now can you see that now a lot of people like a white Christmas tree and if that's the case then you don't have to do anything to the coffee filters um, person I'm doing this for, her Christmas colors are burgundy and gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the tree gold with a shimmer spray. Um, it's actually one I made myself, which, uh, yeah, see all that? Put those off to the side. I said there was more, but I did do a little bit of trimming, you know, to kind of keep my eye on, on what was the direction I was going and when I needed to make my copy filter smaller. So let me set this aside for a second. We'll clean all this up. This is one of those um, brushes that you find at hair salons. Um, I love it for cleaning off, you know, dust and glitter and embossing powder and things like that. Um, off of sticky surfaces, like it works on my on my craft mats and and things like that, so that. I can get it all up. All right, so that's my Christmas tree for now. I'm going to finish off this video. I will make a part two when I go to decorate it. So you can see it's, like I said, it's not hard. It's just a little time, time consuming. You know, it's labor intensive, but not in a hard way. It's just, it takes some time. Now I wanted to show you, here's the bottom, you see? It's like that all the way. Now, what I will do before I uh, get this ready to go is I will take a piece of cardboard and I will cut it out and I will set this down on the cardboard, you know, to keep this part of it flat so it doesn't want to roll back to the beginning or, you know, roll back to like it was when I first started. And that's what I'll do. Oh, I see that one. There we go. And we'll turn it just a little bit and see if we've got maybe right there is a little bit. And I'm pretty sure that's all. I may even make this skinnier because um, it's almost too... Ugh. I want it a little bit more skinnier on the top. So... But that's what I'm going to do, and part two will be uh, painting it and possibly starting the decorations. 
So on that note, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for joining me today. Um, remember, if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, let me know if you, you know, have any comments or any suggestions or even maybe how to make that silly comb without such a, such a, uh, a headache for me, because I know there's easier ways out there. I just, for some reason, my brain just doesn't want to work. And, uh, so I'm going to let you go. Remember, always, always, always find the humor in life, because if you don't, life sucks. It really does. <laughs> so everybody have a great day, evening, morning, whatever time of the day you're watching this. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.